Greetings and welcome to Old Drunken Discography, where old friends and fans come together to BS, argue, occasionally agree, and discuss a musical artist. Today we are talking about the new Aesop record, Integrated Tech Solutions. If you like this content, do us a solid, give us a thumbs up, or better yet, subscribe. We have Jimi Hendrix, Tool, and Quicksand coming up. Also, be sure to check out our interview with Sage Francis, who gives a lot of good insight on his album covers. <laughs> so with that, with me today, he's by the river, Tim. What's going on? And time moves differently for him, Cole quit. Jesus, I wish that were true. And our returning special guest, he's got a mindful solutionism, Garrett. <laughs> How's it going, guys? <laughs> we had to bring he's back our hip hop. Oh, go ahead. That's Jason. There you go. Yeah. We had to bring back our uh, special, our resident hip hop specialist for this one. <laughs> um, uh, relationship with Aesop. Um, I guess I'll start off. Colquitt said new album's coming out. He wanted to review it. I said, that's cool. Who the hell is Aesop Rock? I'd heard the name, not really listened to him. I heard By the River, and I'm like, eh, it's okay. And then I heard Long-Legged Larry, and it changed my life. <laughs> Long-Legged nice. Larry you got it. was badass. And then I heard The River in this album, and it was actually really good, so I'll get into that. But basically, uh, Aesop Rock newbie here for me. I'm even newer. Like, Yeah, you guys said, hey, let's do this video, and so I listened to it. And uh, first impression. So, yeah, completely new artist for me. Have you heard Long Legged Larry? Not yet, no. <laughs> Best song I've heard all year, actually. Okay. <laughs> My kids, actually. You know, it's funny. is like sometimes you just have to find music that your kids can listen to, and they love that song. They might not, uh, you know, obviously it's a little too deep for them to be fully invested in him, but they're like, oh, we, we love that song. Oh. <laughs> My kids loved it, too. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I remember, I guess I saw like there was a CMJ like top 40 chart and Bazooka Tooth was at the top of it. I was like, all right, that's some crazy album artwork. I got to like check that out. And uh, and I did and I liked it. And then I found Labor Days and fell in love with him as an artist altogether. Like those three records just sold me and I've been keeping up with them. Every record that comes out. I just love this dude. He's awesome. Right. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, I've been listening to Aesop sing since he put out his album Float. So I think he really only had like maybe one or two releases before that. I know Apple Seed was before that, and yeah. there might have been another one. Um, but that's going back to 2000. And uh, the first person I had heard with like the really crazy intricate wordplay and the lyrics were just like, whoa, I, th th this is pretty crazy here. So uh, yeah, it's been going back quite a while now. Well, who wants to start us off talking about the new record? I want to hear. I will. I loved it. Yeah, I want to hear uh, one of the new guys. Say it again. I want to hear one of the new guys talk about it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. I loved it. I thought. Uh, I thought it had like a real cool like '80s vibe going on, especially with the instrumentation and I and the samples throughout were great. Um, yeah, the uh, voc vocally. It reminded me, uh, delivery wise, of like a Dell the Funky Homo Sapiens, yeah, Homo Sapien, mm -hmm. and uh, Deltron. Yeah, exactly. Well, and so, and then that led me straight to the Doctor Octagon stuff and Cool Keith, and I even think uh, Critical Beatdown was mentioned at some point, and uh, yeah, just uh, real old school, uh, but very modern. Um, I, yeah, I loved it. This might be my favorite hip hop album I've heard in a while. Heard a lot of like outcast kind of stuff going on too, just real experimental. Yeah, um, yeah, I liked it. I th I think Ace plays most of the bass lines. I'm not 100 percent sure. Nice. But... Okay. Well, I was just looking at the liner notes, and he did. I didn't get all the way through them yet. I just literally opened the vinyl like um, an hour ago, but he did produce. <laughs> I think every song on the album, yeah. which is pretty great, you know, in a lot of ways to be able to do both sides of it where you produce and, and write all the lyrics. That's uh, mm -hmm. that's a feat in itself. So, yeah, man. 
he's an artist artist i think that's why like you would might get that outcast kind of vibe too or whatever like it's got like a a very funk oriented like vibe going to it especially this record like the bass lines are just always fat and like yeah no and i and i love like uh especially uh especially funky stuff where you like you get the different beats going on here and there Mm -hmm. it's not just the same shit throughout the whole song and there's no changes or anything yeah like musically it's very adventurous there's a few songs on here like that where it yeah. switch up and you're kind of like, you know, and I, I do like that as well. I mean, especially having listened to hip hop for so many years and growing up where it was, you know, four, <laughs> four beats uh, that would just be <laughs> over and over and over again. So you're, this is a, they've gotten more experimental. And um, I wonder how much, you know, we partnered up with LP and obviously LP was even more of a producer than a lyricist. So I just wonder how much of that they maybe had worked on beats and things together, possibly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I might have to say I need way more time with this album. Yeah. No, yeah. Agreed. <laughs> agreed. Like there's so the part like he this is I think this is the second song I've heard he's done that he refers to a Katamari. And Katamari Damashi is one of my favorite games ever made. So I just love the fact that he brings up a Katamari and, and multiple songs now. But like his his lyrics are so dense and so like multi-dimensional. Like because there's there's different definitions for everything. Like there's multiple meanings to a lot of the things that are going on in most of his lyrics. And I definitely felt that a lot. But there's also does stuff like where he just really talks about how much he likes rivers and pigeons. Right. And, you know, really did you get, simple. Did, and did you guys pick up in uh in, by the river? Did you pick up in the triple Lundy? I think that's the song where he mentions the triple Lundy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> I caught the the name drops of REM, Radiohead, Baja, Baja, Minor Threat. Yeah, Minor Threat's right. I caught up Brian Eno mixtape. Yeah. One hundred feet tall was phenomenal. I mean, any song about Mr. T and the A Team is a plus. No fools, yeah, no what? suckers. Be good to your mother. <laughs> um, time moves differently here. There is no other. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was the song I needed to bring up because uh, hearing it and knowing Tim was going to hear it, I was like, man, that's beautiful. Because I have a <laughs> specific memory of being at Tim's house and hearing uh, Mr. Bungle's California one in the same night as also witnessing uh, Mr. T's Be Somebody or Be Somebody's Fool on VHS. Uh, <laughs> that was... Mwah, that was a chef kiss evening, sir. And uh, oh, the hear a song, I hear a song just dedicated to how awesome uh, Mr. T is and how great his cereal was. Is right. just, I didn't like the cereal. Magical cereal. thing, man. I, I pity like the fool that don't eat Mr. T's breakfast cereal. I yeah, didn't I mean, eat I mean, that, I mean, that Batman cereal. Ugh. Yeah, but dude, all right. Well, all right. Speaking of Batman, another Tim Burton film featured the Mr. T cereal, and that would be Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Boom! Check oh, me. oh, I know Pee Wee ate, but you know, but Pee Wee had some flaws. Oh, he had some flaws. <laughs> uh, track seventeen was beautiful. Yeah, and that the piano in that song, yeah. the lyrics. That's the thing I really like about him is like he can be obtuse and and just odd and abstract and yeah. uh, and, and wild, but just hits you with this an emotional peak the next minute where you're just like, holy shit, I'm alive. This is crazy. And I, and like you all said, I, we need time to, uh, to dissect everything a little bit more, but that was the first time, I guess I just always, I mean, he's mentioned the, and with the name that he has um, mentioned him being Jewish before. And I guess I just assumed he's Jewish. I mean, his name was Ian Matthias Bobbitts, but, um, (laughs) That, that song seemed like maybe it was on one side of the family where they were Christian and religious and talking about like praying hands and stuff like that. So I, I'm like, man, I really got to go back and, and, and listen to this again. Yeah. And oh, again. This, at least and, it's yeah. good and you want to go back and listen to it. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. It's so good. The production on it is phenomenal. And it's, it's four days old, it looks like. Five yeah. days old. Yeah. Just yeah. came out. Yeah. It's Friday. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's, I yeah, can't, yeah, it's great. <laughs> like I, I listened to it for the third time today and I was like, man, I'm still, still barely scratching the surface of oh. how 
like great this record actually is, man. That's really when we good. do when we do his discography, I'm gonna need a couple weeks to like Yeah. Oh, you yeah. might need longer oh. than that. Like there's oh, song you know him. You know what? We could just we could just do one album at a time, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Let us yeah. know in the comments below if you want to see separate videos for each album. Yes. Please make my life easier. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, album art is fantastic. All of his album art was pretty good, mm-hmm. well, most of it. But and, and the production throughout the album was fantastic. There were there were moments where, like, uh, I felt the balance and the mix of everything was just spot on. The vocals sat in very nicely with some really clean instrumentation. I can't wait to listen to this, uh, like, on a big pair of speakers. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. This is yeah. a wrench in my you know Wolfer, you know on this shit, man. Yeah, like, I can't I can't wait to like I'm gonna have to pick up the vinyl. It's since it's new. Well, shit. While you mention that, I'll show you the vinyl. I'm gonna turn the, yeah, I'm gonna gonna turn the lights cool. off. Um be, well, I don't know. You guys might be able to see it. So the it's super wow. thick. Yeah, like you can see, and there's a USB port at the bottom. <laughs> and when you plug it in and you press these two buttons here, the whole thing like lights oh, up and plays the song. Holy crap. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm buying that immediately. Yeah, like, it's super yeah. cool, right? It has like a whole that thing. is that is great. That reminds me of Pink Floyd's pulse. Because they had yeah, a whole I remember that. Yeah. Every time I didn't own it, but a friend did. And every time to go stay at his house, I'd see that fucking dot just blinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a must buy there. So I'm excited to get into nice. that and check it out a little bit more. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm excited to uh, yeah, it's thumbs up next month and 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 buy that. Um, yeah, I get an extra hundred fifty dollars from Alabama. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Alabama, for our useless, useless stimulus. Great job, guys. Anyway, sorry to get political. <laughs> <laughs> I need more time with the album. It's yeah, great. I mean, that's the, the late contender the for uh, end of the year list. I think honestly. <laughs> Oh yeah. It, it throws yeah. a wrench in my uh current my, my list that I had going. It, it throws a wrench in there. So well I'm I'm not sorry. Something's gonna slide down. Yeah, no, excellent. <laughs> uh yeah, man. It's good. Uh I love the fact uh just to mention on failure, which is just talks about how Van Gogh was not even respected when he was a painter, but he found this painting that he really liked and uh, he thought it was pretty cool that uh, that just because you're not successful doesn't mean you're not going to do something important, which is pretty sweet and inspirational and comes from a slant. You don't really expect from a hip hop dude, which is pretty dope. And I really enjoyed that very much. My notes said on failure was something. Everyone should be listening to Aesop now, not later. Understand what I'm saying? <laughs> right. When- we talked about that with Sage too. You're like, hey, do you think yeah. that like the longevity will be there? I'll tell you, aggressive. So the the story songs that he's had over the years have always mm-hmm. been really good. And I think to your point that you mentioned, um, it it's tough because um, some of the songs are real intricate and some of them are really to the to the point. Um, but aggressive Steven was awesome. Like yes. that was, that was for awesome. a lot of reasons, awesome. right? And yeah. it's up there with like no regrets, man. Like it's up there from the story songs for right. sure. And you wonder sometimes you're like this, the, that song, Mr. T, you're like, could could he be getting, are all these stories that have happened to him or is he that good of an artist where he could hear something happening from someone else and sort of recreate that imagery of like what it would be like walking into that scene. But it feels so real that you would have uh, yeah. to almost think it had to happen. Like That yeah. had to have happened with Mr. T. That was so detailed. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, even if it's not, He's that good a storyteller that who fucking knows, man. Right. Really. Oh man. No. Yeah, I, I liked it a lot. I, I'm uh, excited to check out the rest of the discography. And then eight and nine. And this too. Uh, salt and pepper squid. So the, it's a weird. It's a little weird, like uh, chorus and everything. But there was something, and I'll have to go back and listen to it. But there's something in salt and pepper squid where he talks about not eating the whole entire time, and then goes into nine. Or time moves differently here, and it's just all food references that are all twisted together, and you're just kind of like, well, that's not an accident. You know? Yeah, that one just made me hungry. <laughs> Something about ribs, right? With some sauce on it. <laughs> can't Man, I, can't remember, 
I can't remember the name of the song, but he has a song that's all about being at um at a family dinner and uh, mom serving green beans and just oh yeah eat them and like man dude like even if it's not true the way he can describe a scene and create an image in your mind of a specific thing uh dude dude's a master storyteller man he's so good doesn't he hold (laughs) the record for like the most words used yeah that was like i don't know that was like 15 years ago maybe somebody surpassed him and i just don't know no he's still been putting out records he's probably surpassed that that's fair it's called Grace. So we t- it basically for you guys yes. that haven't listened to it before, it's a story of where his friends show up and want him to come outside, and he can't go outside because he won't friggin' eat a a, a green bean. Yeah. And so he won't eat green beans, so he has to stay at the table while everybody else is enjoying and having a good time. But it's like, it's just the way it. It's like, how could you write a story about that? He does. But <laughs> one of my favorite stories from him is Ruby, which I'm not sure if you've heard. Yeah. Quit which is about um, a little kid who gets out of their high chair during a 4th of July party and drown is uh, drowning in a pool and a dog comes to save the, the kid. That's like, yeah. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I love that record so much. Yeah. Um, Skeleton, right? Yeah. No, Skeleton is so good. I love that record so much, dude. Yeah. Like there's so many great records this guy has, man. They're so good though. There's a one that's like, I can't even remember the name of it, but it's like literally a psychedelic, uh, it's impossible kid yes it is impossible kid that record is insane it's a concept record and it's just all about stuff man i don't even know man it's fucking wild <laughs> yeah. like it's like a great terrence mckenna uh monologue but done through hip-hop but like it's wild man it's a really good record yeah i'm excited to get to that discography i know we we're gonna do run the jewels sometime in january yes but yes so, so I wonder if this idea, and the, I guess maybe questions we can research a little bit. So this integrated tech solutions, it comes up obviously a lot throughout the album. I'm not sure if it's the whole, like, if, if, is this a concept? It seems like it's a concept album, but then you have this song like, Vitiv- I don't know if you, how you say that, Viditus? Viditus. Viditus, where like, it's a really good story, but I don't know if it ties into the theme of the song or not, or the album yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's ironic though, because like a lot of the songs are about nature. <laughs> like, like it's kind of weird to have it be like a concept record about tech, but then also be like, you know, hey, nature's pretty dope. Right? Like, <laughs> I mean, mindful solutions. Nature is the new tech. Of... Like, pigeons are like rivers, you know. Yeah, like, solutionism <laughs> ties into it perfectly, right? Like that would be definitely on on par with the theme. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, no, I remember it because like that one. I know that song was a was a li- released previous to the record, and yeah. I remember that being like everybody been like, okay, this fits with the idea of what we know so far. But then I heard the rest of the record, and I'm like, well, I don't know, man. <laughs> like the <laughs> double meaning hasn't been discovered quite yet. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Be- Time moves differently here, guys. It does. I love mindful solutionism though, like just how that song even just how it kicks in at the beginning. Yep. Is I'm excited. I'm ready to do some <laughs> ASAP rock. Yeah. Maybe yeah. after Christmas. Yeah, man. It'll it'll be work for sure. Because I, lot- <laughs> I even wrote down a number this time just for you, Cole Quit. I got eight point nine. Whoa. Damn. Let me let me that's about where I was thinking, honestly. Uh, eight point nine to nine point two. Yeah, I'm gonna lean higher. I gotta hear it again though, for sure. I gotta add the numbers, man. Give me a second. Mm. Yeah, I'm not prepared um, for that. Eight point nine. I'm gonna go nine point two for you, Tim, just because I feel okay. like okay. Yeah, sure. Review. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, fine with that. I'll go nine point three just to one up you. <laughs> Come on, Garrett. Nine point four. Do it. <laughs> No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait, and I don't, I, don't, I don't even know how your scale works yet. It, it, when you guys do scale, is these it only are just an initial impressions uh, based on your your how much music you've listened to in your life and your oh. first vibe on hearing it? Like, what is your first vibe? Because I love this record, so I'm I'm okay with nine point four already. I'm sure it'll get better. Yeah, sure. So it's not just you don't do the scale just on his work alone, like top oh, just whatever, really whatever you think the album is. Impression of the record, first impression. Yeah, I, I, I'm floating somewhere in the high eights, the low nines, but I have to let it see which song is really growing you. It takes mm-hmm. a while. Yeah. Well, we're going to go strong start. 
point five. Is that a fair? These mean nothing. This means These nothing mean at all. Nothing. Right? Don't don't overthink this. this don't is, overthink it. This is just if a you want to go further decimals, you can. You yeah. pick whatever number you want. Eight point six. This well, is just Shawshank <laughs> Redemption has a nine point one on IMDb, and it's the top movie on there of all time. So the, you know they they're leaving room for something else to come yeah. along. Yeah. So and, you know, coming past is Shawshank. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a good movie. Um. I mean, yeah, these are ultimately meaningless, and nobody watches this anyway. Who cares? It's going to be an 8.97, though, average yeah. for the four of us, which is always fun. It's always a fun way to just close an episode kind of thing. You know? It's awesome. <laughs> Strong albums. We get Strong albums. Probably about this record. Yeah, that's true. So that has been our first impressions for Aesop Rock's new record. We want to thank Garrett for coming back. Well, you'll see him again when we do the full discography and run the jewels. Um, hey, Stop Rock, where you at? Sage Francis, he came on our little show that nobody watches, you know. Where you at? You need, you need to come on here. Explain some album art for us. We want to know the, the background of this album art. Jesus, I don't know. He's probably saving that for a book later down the line or something. Give us the, if you're writing a book, give us the scoop. ODD will break the news. Click that bell. Click that and then we'll bell. know. Then we'll know that you know that we know that we're all notified. You can ring my bell. Yeah, that was off key for you, babe. Yep. For the rest are of you. Guys, are you guys in the ASAP Rock group on Facebook or no? No, no. but I'll join it. I should. He's, I don't know that he's in there like Sage is on his, but I'll add you guys to the to the page. Yeah. Sweet. Um Super fans. Yeah, give us a like, subscribe. We're doing Rolling Stones this week. That was a fun episode. And we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.